Today, I am going to tell you how to get the best start in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Trust me, you do not want to mess this up. You only get a certain amount of super easy gems. And that's your one chance of getting a free-to-play head start. And potentially, even a really strong deck right from day one. So stick around. Normally on this channel, we talk about just collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! But this game is incredible. And I wanted to make sure you get to enjoy it too. Overall, this game is honestly really free to play friendly if you know what to do. I was able to build a pretty impressive deck just from one evening of playing. It's not perfect or anything, but the amount of good staples and combos I got here without spending a cent is still pretty great. So I'll show you how I did it. Step 1. Do your 3 tutorials if you're new to Yu-Gi-Oh! or need a refresher. But you can also skip these and still get the gems. Step 2. You'll be given a selection of 3 decks you can start from. They're all pretty shit, so don't worry too much about it. The Synchro one gives you Mystical Space Typhoon, which is alright. The Blue Eyes one gives you nothing much. The Link one gives you some Link monsters, but they're also all pretty weak. It doesn't really matter. I'd personally argue the Synchro one is optimal because of the Mystical Space Typhoon, but it's really whatever. Step. Three. Do the solo mode campaign's first chapter beyond the tutorial, Dual Strategy. Do not start crafting and opening random packs. I understand the temptation is huge. You want to start opening packs, you can't wait to craft your favorite elemental heroes or something like that, but trust me, there are specific things you want to be buying that will give you the best odds of getting the best cards and the best bang for your buck. Later on, you will get to open packs and craft to your heart's desire. But that time isn't now. We want to do this part of the solo mode campaign because not only will it give you gems with which you will buy packs, but there's also some pretty sweet powerful cards that you'll want to be putting in your deck early on. These challenges are also with a deck that the game gives you for free, so it doesn't matter that you haven't built the craziest deck just yet. Trust me, your patience will be rewarded if you just push through this for a second. The first challenge will give you gems and Raigeki, a spell that blows up your opponent's field. Later on, when you get deeper into the strong meta decks and such, you won't be running this card anymore. But in the lower bronze ranks, on the ranked mode of the game, it's still filled with people with low tier decks, filled with normal monsters and such, and Raigeki is absolutely gonna destroy these players. Meaning you get an easier time getting even more gems. Also, at first you won't have all the greatest meta staples just yet. So having just a strong board clear like Raigeki, is still better than the junk the starter decks give you. The next challenge will give you Gems and Monster Reborn, a spell that revives a monster. Again, later on, this is the type of card that you'll cut for better extenders and archetype specific cards, but right now, this is one of the more powerful cards you have access to. You'll definitely get more power out of this card than the weaker cards in the starter deck. It's probably only after 4 to 6 hours of play and pulling and crafting that you'll end up replacing this card, and even then, you might still run it in your final list. The next challenge gives you a pretty weak card that doesn't matter all that much, but it also gives you gems, so you want to be doing it. Now it splits off into two routes. On the bottom there's one more card that's really powerful and normally it's an ultra rare, which means it'll require the rarest crafting material, so you'll definitely want to grab it from here instead if your deck can use the card, and that is Reinforcement of the Army. This card is specifically for decks that play warrior type monsters. So it's not necessarily for everyone, but there are plenty of strong warrior based decks out there like Phantom Knights or maybe you play a fan favorite like Elemental Hero. It's a versatile card and again it's an ultra rare, you might as well grab it for free. At the top of the line you get a few more tutorials that teach you about the summoning mechanics Yu-Gi-Oh has introduced the past years. If you're already a veteran player this won't teach you much, but it once again gives you gems so go finish it anyway. Step 4. Missions. Early in the game there's dozens of missions that will give you gems just for doing literally anything in the game. So you'll want to go and grab all those free goodies there once in a while when you've made some progress. Now that you've done those first intro tutorials, finished some of the solo content and grabbed the rewards from your missions, you should have a really solid amount of gems. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Step 4. 5. You finally get to buy some packs so you can start building your deck. Now wait, wait, don't you dare. Wait. Before you spend, it's important to note that not all packs are created equal. So let me show you what you want to buy first 
and then you can go wild. Before we go into the spice, I quickly wanted to let you know that I stream on Twitch. So if you want to watch someone play Master Duel or you just want to hang live with me, go to the link in the description or twitch.tv slash real solemn and follow me. I'd greatly appreciate it. You can also subscribe here on YouTube, of course, for more Master Duels content. The first thing you want to do is go to shop, then special, and then bundle deal. This is basically where Konami hit the best shit. Notice how on the main shop window, there's these master packs that have all the cards. Well, in this bundle deal, you get a great deal on those very packs and you get a free powerful ultra rare card on top. If you don't know about this, you could be spending thousands of gems on packs, looking for some ultra rares, potentially having to dismantle them to then craft a card that you could have gotten for free right here. So it's crucial that these are the first packs you buy. Now, if you saw this video too late and you already wasted your gems, the most important one in my opinion is the Ash Blossom one. So if you for some reason only can afford one, that's the one I would buy. However, if you saw this video in time, first of all, good job. But secondly, you want to buy all three of these bundles. A free Ash, a free Lightning Storm and a free Solemn Judgment. That's some incredible value. Now once you open these packs you'll notice you gain access to a new type of pack. A secret pack. Here's how this works. When you craft a super rare or higher or you pull a super rare or higher from a given archetype like Elemental Hero or Phantom Knights or whatever theme you can think of, a new kind of pack will appear that you can buy for the same amount of gems as a normal pack. This new kind of pack called a secret pack will always contain a number of cards from a predefined selection. This is because Yu-Gi-Oh is now almost two decades old and so there's many thousands of cards. If you open the random packs with all those cards, chances are you'll never pull the cards of the archetype you want to build a deck around. So if there is a specific archetype you had in mind like volcanics or cyber dragons or code talkers, it's much better to craft a specific super rare you really need from the archetype and then from that point start opening the packs from that archetype, assuming there's cards in there you want to target. Now do note that these packs still contain plenty of cards outside of what you're looking for, but you are improving your odds tremendously. Beyond that, the first time you craft a super rare from such secret pack and you unlock the pack this way, you get a free pull from that pack. So this is another trick you can abuse to get many free pulls and thus higher odds of crafting material. I personally targeted the Phantom Knights pack. It's called Indomitable Knights. This is my main deck in the real life version of the game and so I knew going in that I was going to target that archetype. Now do note these secret packs only stay for 24 hours after they're unlocked. So you need to grind your gems in that time period in order to get the pull from said pack. Now there's one more thing you absolutely need to buy but it's a bit less obvious and that is on the special tab the dual pass. Now this is a bit of an investment in your future. When you buy this you don't actually get anything instantly. But as you progress in the ranked mode of the game, you're actually going to start getting extra rewards from this. And by the end of it, assuming you've played enough, you will have received not just the gems that you invested back, but even more on top. So this is basically free money, free cards, but it's a bit delayed and depends on you progressing through the ranked game. Now, in terms of what else you can buy, let's head back to the main menu of the shop. You'll notice three different packs. Stalwart Force, Revival of Legends and Master Pack. Let me start with Master Pack. These are the packs with literally every card in it. If you've already bought the bundle deals we spoke of earlier, it's likely you already have enough crafting material to get into the secret packs you actually need, or you already have access to secret packs you really like. So usually you won't need to buy these. Then there's Revival of Legends. To me, this pack is focusing a lot on nostalgia bait. Now, I'm a big Blue Eyes fanboy, but in terms of powerful cards, this is usually not the greatest pick. Again, technically you can pull plenty of value from here, but it's about increasing our odds. Usually, the better pack to buy will either be the secret packs we spoke of when you're targeting something for an archetype you've decided on, or the stalwart force. Now, why is stalwart force so good? Let me tell you. For some reason, the game developers decided to ram this pack 
full of some of the best archetypes Yu-Gi-Oh has seen the past years. So if you haven't unlocked any secret packs you like or you're not sure what you want to be building, this pack might get you on track with some of the more competitive decks from the past years. I'm talking Sky Striker, Tri Brigade, Shadows. Altergeist, Eldlich, Numeron, Thunder Dragon, Salamangrate, Lyrilusk, Phantom Knights, and not only that, but also some super powerful staple cards like Halka Fibrax, Boral Sword Dragon, and Pot of Desires. I personally pulled Boral Sword Dragon from this pack, and while Access Code Talker is a bit better in most decks, this is still a really solid finisher, and it's in a pack full of some of the most competitive decks this game has seen. Again, if you're a veteran player and you're already targeting one of the archetypes from a secret pack, that's cool. But if nothing caught your eye yet, I feel this pack is definitely better than the general master packs or the more nostalgia based pack. So step 6, we've gone through the solo mode for our free gems, we've done tons of missions, we've bought the right bundles, the right packs, we've been targeting some secret packs from an archetype we've been having our eyes on, or maybe not. Maybe you've just been buying stalwart force packs, that's all cool too. Now it's time to head into the deck builder. Now I'll say this, at first your deck won't be great, and that's totally fine. The goal is to make your deck better as you progress through the game, unless you spend money on packs of course. We're gonna create a new deck and then at the top right of the screen click on the three stripes the sub menu and then click on dismantle all extra cards this is essentially gonna turn all of your spares that you get from opening all these packs into material with which you can craft new cards this way you turn cards you don't want into cards you do want now from this point you'll have some crafting materials but not necessarily enough what I did here and this is pretty personal was I started dismantling every card that I knew I wasn't gonna play in my deck or that I knew wasn't very strong. So I basically only kept relevant cards for my deck and cards that are good meta staples. If you don't necessarily know yet what good meta decks are or what good cards are, don't worry, you don't need to dismantle stuff then. But it did give me a lot of material to start crafting some of the stronger cards for my personal deck. So speaking of strong cards, here's some of the better cards that you may consider creating that will be good in many decks. And I'll try to have both the best ultra rares and perhaps even some budget options right here. So in terms of ultras, the obvious winners are Max C and Ash Blossom. Max C is known to be an insanely broken card and yes, it is in fact legal in this game. If you know or don't know, in the English version or the Western version of the game, the TCG, Maxi is banned for being too strong, but in the OCG or basically the Japanese version of the game, Maxi is not banned. And in this game, for some reason, it's not banned either. So it's somewhat of a mix between the OCG and the TCG in terms of banned cards. So if you have the material to make it, you could go ahead and make it. Don't necessarily spend all of your material on it. Maybe there's still a super important extra deck card your deck needs, but it's definitely an insane card. Then there's Ash Blossom, another incredible card, and it can also counter Max C. This is also why I mentioned earlier that it's so crucial you grab the free Ash Blossom from the bundles. Next there's Called by the Grave, and this one is maybe a bit less high up on the ladder for some people, but to me this card is also incredible. It can stop both Max C and Ash, and it can also stop some of the stronger archetypes in the meta right now by messing with their graveyard. Though I personally wouldn't craft this before having my maxi and or ashes and or important archetype cards. Now if you listen to this guide you also have access already to lightning storm and solemn judgment which are again pretty solid cards though I wouldn't necessarily start crafting those for every deck but if you're just getting started with a pile of cards that isn't hyper competitive yet they're solid picks no matter what. Similar story for monster reborn and Raigeki which you both got for free as well. Now again, those aren't quite as strong as the previous two, but again, when you're starting out with just a pile of good cards, it's still better than starting out with a pile of bad cards. Now a cool budget option I highly recommend is Forbidden Chalice. This is a mere rare, so very easy to craft, and it is essentially the diet version of Forbidden Droplets, which is an incredibly strong ultra rare staple card. So if you don't quite have the material yet for those droplet plays, 
playsets, you can consider playing the Forbidden Chalice for now instead. So those were the tips I wanted to give you to get started with Master Duels and hopefully this way you're one step ahead of the competition. Again, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Let me know if there's anything you'd like me to make a video on. And again, go to the link in my description or twitch.tv slash real solemn to hang out and watch me play Master Duels live. I will see you soon. Ciao.